Welcome, everyone, to the general gaming channel known as M12 Warthog Game. Hey guys, M12 Warthog Game here. Welcome back to another episode of Strategy Guide. Today, we are playing the map Dead Central on Risk Factions, and we are going to go over the objectives as to start out, and I'll show you step by step how to win on the dead central map from there on out manually picking all territories and so forth so we have control death's door we get guaranteed card control next gen bay gives us an additional maneuver during your maneuver phase control an enemy capital gives you a starting maneuver take over seven territories in one turn gives you two extra troops for a turn extra defense die you get you get when you control th all three complete continents Okay, now, as you guys may know, that this is actually a smaller map version of, I think, Big Ice? I think has this chain island with the temple in there, or it could be Limbo, I'm not sure. One of the two, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Mainly, what I'm going to do is first off, I'm going to get, I'm going to try and get... Us, this island down here, Black Fort. Now, the main reason I want this is because there's only two territories to defend. But but that's going to be kind of hard, so I'm probably going to go for probably Death's Door as well. As in total, I would have five territories that I could protect. But if I go here, if I zoom in here... Gutrin, I think is how you say that. They have some strange names for these. Are all the areas that I want to get. I want to get Gutrin, Black, F um, Black Fort, and then maybe we're probably not gonna be able to pick Death Snore, but maybe start to attack that area, and definitely get a territory in Von Semple because we do not want our enemies to have full control of that. Von Semple is the most powerful territory. Continent bonus that you can get if you control the full Vaughn's temple all three territories You get the ability to convert one territory per turn and that can sometimes change the tide of battle And I'll talk about that later now of course if you want to get all of these territories That's fine. The only problem is is that people are gonna pick the higher value Places first such as ones with crypts in them, but for me I'm just going to pick all of these territories. Now, the robots are definitely going for Death's Door, and I'm probably going to get that next. What I want to do here is, from the looks of it, all three of us are picking our own territory separate from each other, and they picked Death's Door. I freaking hate them. You know what? We might have to change up our plan. Now, this does happen. This does happen. Don't get me wrong. This does happen where we have this. Now I have three territories to protect. That's what I have to worry about. Three. Because... Broken Steps. Gordon. And... Gutter's Corner are all th three territories I have to worry about. This territory right here cannot be directly attacked. So what I'm going to have to do is pick the, try and pick the rest of that store and hope that they don't pick any more. Now I have um, two decent spots as to where I want to go for my capital at this moment. I'll talk about that when I get to the actual phase of doing it. Now of course I'm going to pick one in Von Simple because you know. I don't want them to have full control of that. Matter of fact, I'm probably not going to be able to fully try to fully defend Vaughn's Temple. Unless I could get it early on, which of course I didn't. Although, I'm going to defend my borders, of course. Which, if I take out this territory in Black Fort, I'll have only these two. This will no longer be a border. And then I'll have four instead of five to start out with. But for now, 
I don't want them to have a crypt. And it looks like I get the last territory in Black Fort. As you can see, like the right half of the screen is where I kept all my territories. I, me and the robots have about the same presence. I actually have a little bit more stronger presence in that area. So, what I'm going to have to do is take turns defending each border. Except for one, which will be this one, which I will def will not be a border territory as I'm going to take it take out the one territory that's making it a border territory right here by putting all my troops during drafting phase and they're getting rid of that. To me that's the best option. That way I don't have to split That way I don't have to split um that way I don't have to split because this territory here is technically a border to other islands, but it will not have to be defended as that border be taken out and that thing only borders my territories so once i get that i'll because i have four right now now bring it down to three and then from there i can expand and move my border out as needed because for an example if i look at this if i take out this territory and defend this no other territories could attack it except for this, which I'm planning on taking out first turn. So I could easily get Vaughn's Temple, but someone's going to try and take it away from me, no matter what. But I'm probably going to defend that, because it's right next to my other ones. And it's going to be very easy for me to do that, because I can maneuver troops into there from my island, from my chain of islands. And that's going to give me a presence always in Vaughn's Temple for the fir beginning of the game. And that pretty much ensures that my enemies will not get Vaughn's Temple and be able to convert territories to their side in the beginning. Which can be very devastating if you don't know if you don't know how to fight that off. And and the best way to do that is divide up your troops. I know outnumbering at the point of attack is probably one of the best strategies here. But if you have 17 guys in a territory and I can convert your territory, that means I can just take those extra troops and that's like doubling whatever I get from drafting phase and just completely annihilating you. Like, say I can take out these, I can defend my borders and then convert that and pretty much just use that as my attacking army this turn so I have more troops to defend and like spend none on attack because I converted and pretty much do that. Or I could do that as like these are extra troops. That I wasn't planning on getting, but I could like use that to just take out as many territories as possible just for the sole purpose of reducing the number of troops you get next turn without having to really well defend them. And that pretty much um, sort of screws you up for the next few turns and so forth. But that's just, but that's just an option. But I don't think anyone's going to get like 17 per turn early on as this is a... This ter as this map does not have that many territories. It only has a total of 32, so. Which, by the way, I figured that out by pressing the left trigger and you can look at this menu. It has lots of in useful information, okay? This thing always has useful information for you. Okay. Now, the way I see it is that they're putting more troops. They have like three, six, and four over here. And all of those can attack this. So my guess is they're going to want that crypt. And that's why I'm adding that extra unit there. Even though I will not be able to... Even though that I can't, like, evenly distribute my, um, forces between them. Now, of course, for placing capital, I could put this here, take out Death's Door, and just have it on Death's Door, and I could just defend that. That would be all the way on the other side of the map. That would be easy. But it is starting next to an enemy location. And then again, I have... Purple Tunnel is a great place because it cannot be directly attacked. You want to know what? I'm just going to go here. Now 
Now, I guess the zombies are going to either put their capital there, right where they did, or I was going to say put it next to the robots' capital, because they have seven troops there. Now, of course, as I said I would do... Take that out. Now get plus one troop per turn due to a continent bonus. Now another thing, this is no longer a border, so I can just maneuver that there and I got 10 troops in one territory. I can pretty much guarantee take out the third and final part of um, Vaughn's Temple. Now if you get all three territories of Vaughn's Temple, you do not get to convert a troop or, or territory that turn. Now of course they went for Death's Door and got the bonus. Now, they're getting two troops per turn. Now, I'm going to take over a territory, of course, to stop them from getting that bonus, which will ap which will apply on their next turn. But I'm also going to take out a territory in Von Stump, because if I have full control of that on the beginning of my next turn is when I can convert a troop. Now, of course, they're going to... The zombies are going to attack the robots, and I'm going to... He has full control of next gen bay. So, each of us have con full control of at least one continent. Except for me, I have control of two continents. Now, each one of us has control over one territory in Von's Temple. Now, it's going to be hard because a lot of territories border this. There's, like, at least a total of, like, seven different territories that could attack Von's Temple. And there's, like, about three, at least three for, like, each one. So, it's going to be kind of difficult to defend territories and whatnot to a certain extent but what i'm gonna do here is seven there that is now a border and i'm not gonna take out the other one because i probably won't be able to defend that but i now have a presence in death's door now another thing i need to do is maneuver troops into there as that will become a border now if I just hold for now if I just divide my troops up into these four different areas I can sort of hold down a solid border now my guess is is that once they get that crypt in next gen bay they're gonna go for the crypt in Skullshire which has the zombies in it now, of course, zombies are going to try and capture this whole island to themselves because they want a continent bonus. And it's much easier to defend this island rather than next gen bay as there are multiple points in which you can attack it from. And plus, their capital is on that island and they're probably going to want that defended. Now, of course, as you can see, I don't have the highest amount of territories, but this, this territory... But my strategies take time to work. Now I'm going to cash in my troops. Because I have borders to defend. Okay. Now I'm going to take out another territory in Death's Door. I'm going to finish the attack, get my star. Maneuver. Do I want to maneuver anything? Can I maneuver? No. All my... Only places I can maneuver are places that have at least two or more troops. The only places that have two or more troops are my border, so why, why maneuver? Okay. If no players will always go for capitals, crypts, barracks, um, objective based things if it helps them get victory. They control an enemy capital, they now have one extra troop per turn. Now, 
I'm taking this slowly because I always want my borders defended. If you have like seven troops per border, they're and they have five troops in the territory next to you, they're gonna attack the guy that has less troops because they can get territories from them. I'm making it harder for them to get tr territories from me and making them want to attack the other guy instead. Also outnumbering at the point of attack, like I said. Uh, one of the best strategies that you can make use of in this game. Okay, there. <clears throat> Pretty soon, next turn, I'm going to have full control of Death's Door. I will then get the objective for controlling three complete continents, and I'll get an extra defense die. Now, I would be playing this a little bit differently if there's a war room, because you need three objectives and hold your capital for victory. Although, that's not what we're doing here. My guess is they're gonna go for pretty much that. Bond's Temple. Now, another strategy that they could have done was at least take out one territory in next gen bay so that the zombies don't get their continent bonus, which they get for holding. For holding, um, next gen bay. Now, I don't know why the zombies attacked the crypt. See, that doesn't... Oh, well, they have three and they can freeze the territory. But what I don't get is why they didn't go for their capital. Because they get, like, one tr troop per turn. Drafting phase, you get three troops. You get one troop for every three territories you have. Territories that have cities count as two territories in this aspect of drafting. You get... Pl and then you get whatever continent bonuses you have. Capitals grant you plus one. Plus one troop for each capital you have and so forth. So, you know, it is a little bit different. Okay, but I'm going to put all my troops here. And now I control that. I'm going to maneuver... There, I'm going to get a defense sign instead of a card. And now, I'm going to take the time next turn to redistribute my um, orders because they're, of course, being attacked. And I knew this was going to happen if they cashed in all their cards. Now, they only have four troops, so they really can't go that far into my territory from doing this. Now, of course, I'm going to, like, put all my troops there and reconquer that territory to seal up that border and spend the next turn after that redistributing what I have to places where, where they need to go. Now, he has nine troops just sitting on Vaughn's temple waiting to attack something. So what I'm going to have to do is take the place of uh, Vaughn's Temple that I lost by force. Fast battle. Put nine there. Finish attack. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to maneuver here so that there's 12 in each one now the reason i'm doing this is because i didn't want one to have less than the other as um the zombies have nine troops just sitting right outside vaughn's temple they get the chance they're gonna attack a territory next turn which everyone has the least amount of um troops Now, I think the robots are going to take back their capital next turn and get full control of Skullshire, get a continent bonus and a bonus for holding their capital, but they're going to get 23. Holy cr That's told 32. And they haven't attacked anyone yet. That can be devastating. But they're not attacking with them. I. I this is strange. I would have 
attack something by now if I had that many. But you want to know what? Put some here. I'm going to attack that. Finish. Now I have full control of Von Semple. Now I can't get. I can get. Now I can't con convert territories yet. That's at the beginning of your turn. So the turn you get it, the turn you get full control of it, isn't necessarily the turn that you can start converting territories. The only time that uh, applies to you is if you're manually picking territories and you happen to get all Von's temples. But you sometimes necessarily don't want to do that. Because that means you're sacrificing other easily defendable territories to attack from. Now, of course, they're going to attack the zombies. Now, the zombies could easily go for Fallshire and take that completely over. And then double back their capital and get that if they want. But, of course, they're going to get... They're eventually going to get that area of Vaughn's Temple. But the fact that I have nine troops in there and that I have a more well-defended area as I have extra defense die get, reduce their army by a lot from thir from 32 to 15. Now, of course, my prediction... What? They could have gone in and taken my capital in Black Fort. I'm just pointing this out now. They clearly had the opportunity to go for Black Fort, and you want to know what? They did not do it. They're passing up opportunities here that could have easily devastated me. But you want to know what? Now they're going to pay for it. 15 troops of yours, they go bye-bye. As they... As I have an extra defense side, that means I pretty much need less troops to defend the territory, and they're spending more troops to take it over. Which means I can just re-counter strike them by counter-attacking their territories in a way so where they lost... They went from 32 to 15 just from taking over one territory. When, when if I didn't have defense die, it would cost them a lot less. But this just makes it easier so if I retake that territory, if they want to take it back, they're just going to have to re-fight me again and lose more more troops. If I can control... If I have full control of Vaughn's Temple at the beginning of my next turn, I'm going to con... I'm going to convert the territory that has the most amount of troops unless it's too far away from my territories. I'm going to use that against people. It all really depends. Now the Colonel Stiffenberg, Stiffenberg is going for Falshire. Not a big surprise. Anyone know what? I see fit to convert this territory. Why? Because that's going to be a new border. I'm going to use the 10 troops that I have and go through and take out the rest of Skullshire. And that's going to piss off. That's going to definitely piss off some people. Mainly the mainly the robots because they want their capital back. Of course, when I'm taking out this territory, you got to note that you may not notice it, but there is a little bit of a line that indicates that they can, that from the zombie capital that the robots own, that they can still attack. Gutrin, so you wanna get leave some troops there for that to be defendable. Two. Uh, 
but then we're gonna take that out now I really don't have to take it out in any particular order as I'm just gonna maneuver all of these troops here and I'm gonna take another star now I own completely own five continents zombies own nine territories the robots only own three and just as I predicted, they were probably going to attack this territory, so I left troops there. But because I have extra defense die, they can't really do much about it or get into our territories. No, although that is a lower defended territory, I need to bring the defense up on that. Now, of course, I can maneuver troops out of Vaughn's Temple area. One of them, because one of those areas is not a border now. And I can do that, and I probably will do that. As I don't have to worry about putting troops there from my drafting phase into that area. <laughs> now if I want to convert a territory, it'd probably be that one. It's like I can convert the territory next to mine that has the most amount of troops, then add my drafting phase troops onto that. That way, I have more of an attacking army, and I don't have to spend troops. Like, put troops on a border attack, and then split them up. And it means that I have more numbers to attack with. And if you outnumber at the point of attack by a greater force, then you are pretty much guaranteed a victory at this point. Which, now I'm gonna go... And I'm going to take out this temple or crypt or whatever it's called. And that took out a lot of troops just to take out that one territory. And I'm going to have to spread out 13 amongst 5 others. Probably not the best thing to do. I'm probably just going to refuel my troops by putting more there next turn. But of course, I'm going to put 13 there. And I'm going to freeze the territory. If I want to freeze the territory, I'm going to probably freeze the capital. Just because I know the zombies are going to want to get that back because it's their capital. The robots can't move their five troops from there. Which, that territory is the most well-armed territory out of all the robot territories. So, that pretty much, they can't even use that territory this turn. Which is actually more beneficial to me. Because you see those four troops? They could have put them in there and had nine in one territory, but instead, they only have five in one. I pretty much effectively keeping the limit of the limiting the numbers of troops that they're going to want to be able to put in one territory. Now, of course, the zombies can't fully get control of that area. If I keep freezing that area, the zombies can never fully get control of that area. For a continent bonus, but they can never fully get control of um, pretty much any other territory as I have them on lockdown. Now, I don't think I'm going to convert an army this turn, as I need to put more troops here. I'm going to get more from here, as I can actually maneuver troops on my n at the end of my phase. Now, this area here, pretty much any area in Vaughn's Temple no longer needs borders, so I'm going to start, at the end of my turn, maneuvering troops into those areas. Now, what I'm going to do here is this. Wow, that's taking a lot of troops just to take over two ter territory with two armies. Now, if I just have a few ter... Now, that's four, tr three troops. That's not a whole lot. But then again, I can just maneuver troops to re-strengthen this border. Or I could have just frozen the territory. Now, of course, I would like to freeze this territory, but it's the... Robots last territory, so I can't actually freeze that. Now, if anything, I would freeze this as it's the least defendable territory because it has 13 troops compared to my other ones, which have 17 and 14 troops. So that one also has a crypt and is a higher value 
territory as it's even closer to the the robots ter um capital and closer to my territory as many factors as to why I'd rather freeze that territory than any other territory. Of course, next turn, I'm just going to put all my troops and try and attack it. Now, of course, the robots are going to take all their troops and put them in on the island and try and retake that. But I pretty much have contained them to this island as they really can't penetrate my defenses outside of the island. And the island ownership is split in half. Now, at this point, I pretty much am guaranteed victory unless they, um, pretty much are going to try and penetrate my defense here, which, which they could have done, but I have an extra defense die, and they have 22 troops, and they could have attacked me with four, my aerial 14, but it wouldn't have done much, as, as they do have more numbers, but I have more, uh, defense bonus. So, the rate at which they lose soldiers when attacking me while I'm defending... Is much higher than I'm losing soldiers from just from attacking. So, so like, like if they attack me, they're losing more soldiers than I would at a faster rate than I am when I'm defending. But it does not apply when I'm attacking. I do not have an attack, an extra attack die. I don't know what. Probably gonna be last turn. Pretty much guaranteed last turn if I do this. So I'm just gonna convert. All my um, extra stars into extra troops. And I'm just going to get victory here. And these strategies, I don't even need to use like the actual battling thing. I just fast battle because I know that if I do this, that I'm just going to get it if I just outnumber at the point of attack. Anyway, guys, that is the strategy guide for Dead Central on Risk Factions. If you guys have any comments, questions, or feedback for me, please leave that in the comments section down below. Don't forget to suggest another map that you want to see me do in the comments section down below. If you want to see me do one first before I get to any others, because I'm planning on doing most of the maps on here, and maybe do strategy guides on other games as well um, that I have. So let me know if you want me to do a strategy analysis of any other strategy game that that you have and i will see you guys later in another video bye bye